Okay. Um, all right, so my name is Andrea Salvatori. I'm based at the University of Essex, and I'll be talking about uh, job polarization uh, specifically uh, in the UK. This uh, talk is very much related to some of the presentations that we've seen today, especially in the first uh, in the first session, and in fact, I'm, I'm glad to I'm, I'm 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 glad that we had those presentations because they explain some of the concepts that are, uh, I don't have to go through uh, them now. But um, the main the, the main empirical fact that uh, uh, a lot of labor economists have been concerned with in recent years is the polarization of the labor market. So this is the decline in the relative number of milling jobs compared to. Um, high paid jobs and low pay uh, jobs, which has been observed in a number of countries, including the UK and uh, the US. The explanations that has been proposed to explain this uh, uh, phenomenon is the so-called routine bias technolo technological change hypothesis, and it's the idea that technology uh, replaces workers in performing routine tasks which are associated with this middling job. So it's a, it's a very much a demand-based explanation where we have a decline in the demand for workers performing routine tasks which leads to a reduction in the level uh, in the relative employment for uh, middling, middling occupations and in the simple story uh, in, the simple, in the simplest version of the story, this also leads to a decline in the relative wages of uh, workers uh, uh, in these in this occupations. There, also, there, there have also been alternative explanations which have been proposed, and namely um, offshoring and trading are uh, among the, 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 the major ones, but usually the papers that have attempted to uh, evaluate the relative importance of technology versus offshoring and explaining the polarization phenomenon in different countries have concluded that technology is uh, more important. Um, so there is evidence in the literature that uh, has been referenced in other presentations before that supports the role of technology as uh, a, an important driver of the polarization of labor market in, in, in labor markets in advanced um, uh, countries. In particular, um, uh, the, the, this, 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 um, this hypothesis originated in the U.S. really, where in the 1990s, um, a, a number of researchers reported that uh, as the occupational distribution was polarizing, uh, occupational wages were also polarizing at the same time. So we had this relative decline in employment and wages in the middle of the occupational distribution, which very clearly suggests to anyone with some economics training that this was a demand-driven uh, phenomenon and technology was the force to be uh, uh, blamed for this. However, as it turns out, that was a very ad hoc story for the US in the 1990s. The US, as uh, John showed in, in, in the presentation in the beginning, did not experience job polarization in the 2000s. Um, job growth was completely skewed towards the bottom, so there was uh, a lot of uh, growth um, in employment at the bottom, and then it was pretty flat towards, uh, for the, in the rest of the distribution. Um, and also job, uh, wage polarization did not occur in the US uh, uh, in, in the 2000s. And similarly, uh, in, uh, in fact, our occupational wage polarization has only ever been observed in the US in the 1990s. Even other countries for which we have evidence of job polarization, we don't have evidence of wage polarization, for example, with Germany, uh, Canada, and we'll see also uh, the UK here. So, yes, there is support for the hypothesis that technology is playing an important role in uh, uh, causing the decline in milling occupations, but at the same time, there are a number of facts that really are puzzles uh, when compared to the standard way of telling the, technolo the technology uh, story. And this paper uh, kind of fits that in into that literature. It takes a closer look to what has happened to the UK, in the UK over the past 30 years, look at a number of details, hence the title, The Anatomy of Job Polarization, and then tries to summarize how much uh, uh, these details that we provide support the hypothesis that the main driver of the process is, in fact, uh, uh, technology. These puzzle over, puzzles overall uh, suggest that 
you know, there are doubts about the extent to which technology is the, 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 the driver of the process, um, and, and also suggest that there are other factors that continue to play an important role, a point that was made this morning um, as well. So as I said, I focus on the UK. The UK is, is, is um, an interesting uh, uh, case, of course, because it's a technolo technologically advanced uh, uh, country. And as it happens, actually, the first paper ever to make a connection between, to establish a connection between the uh, polarization of the occupational structure and technology was a paper that looked at the UK, the Goose and Manning paper of 2007. And they um, uh, analyzed alternative explanations. Well, they, they took into account alternative explanations for the phenomenon. And in particular, they looked at some, uh, changes that had occurred in the UK between the 80s and the 90s on the supply side of the labor market to see whether they could explain the changes in the occupational structure that they saw in the data. And they concluded that these changes did not explain job polarization, changes in education, changes in female participation, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they looked at the period between 1979 and 1999, um, but um, a, lot, a lot happened in the UK from the 1990s onwards in terms of changing in the, on the supply side. The share of graduates, in fact, um, increased threefold, the share of graduates among employees increased threefold between 1980 and 2010 in the UK, and much of this in, uh, increase was actually uh, happened from the early 1990s, so in the, towards the end of the period considered by Goose and Manning. Um, so there, were, there was a very significant change in the, uh, in the composition of the workforce in terms of education. And also there is evidence from the US, as, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, that in the 2000s we uh, didn't really see a much growth in, in top occupations. So there is also a suggestion in that literature, most recent papers, that there's been a, uh, a slowdown in the pace of uh, technological change, or at least there's been a slowdown in terms of the effect that technology is having so on, on, on changes in occupational structure in that country. So this suggests, again, that things might have been different in the period after the Goose and Manning study, both on the supply side, because of the increase in education, and on the demand side, because of the uh, change in the type of technology. Technology. So this paper is a very descriptive paper, uh, I, uh, um, um, not pretending otherwise, uh, that does some very simple things that are very much in line with what is normally done in this uh, uh, literature. So there is nothing revolutionary from a methodological point of view, um, but there is a lot that can be compared to what people have done uh, in related uh, studies. The first thing I do is a simple shift share analysis, which is very close to what Goose and Manning do to reach the conclusion that supply changes did not uh, explain polarization in, in the UK. Uh, and this shift share analysis basically looks at the contribution of uh, uh, changes in the relative size of education groups uh, and changes in the distribution of employment within education groups in explaining uh, uh, job, uh, job polarization. Um, uh, this follows the logic that it's often advocated in, in this literature that if, and, and that if, you, um, if the main driver of the process is technology, then you would see to expect this phenomenon happening everywhere, within every country, as was said this morning, but also within different educational groups, et cetera, et cetera. So this, this provides a way of looking at that. Uh, the second thing I do is to look at changing the occupational wages following the logic that I said before. So the standard, a very simple version of the routine bias technological story would predict a decline in the relative wages in, in, uh, in middling occupations. So we uh, check uh, that. And finally, I compare the, in the paper, I compare the evidence that I produce for the UK to what we know from uh, the US, partly because the US is a natural benchmark given uh, uh, the sites of the literature on the US and the fact that the US can be seen as a technology uh, leader, and partly following again the, 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 the logic that I just explained that uh, if, if the process is driven by technology, then you would expect to see similarly, uh, uh, you, see, you would expect to see uh, uh, similar patterns in, in, uh, in uh, similarly developed uh, 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 countries. Now, the main conclusion that I will draw in the end is that uh, a graduate, the change in the, in the education composition of the workforce in the UK contributed to the main feature of the polarization process in the UK, which is a substantial shift of employment from the middle to uh, the top. 
And here is what polarization looks like in the UK in the past uh, three decades. So this is following the approach that we've seen this morning already, where uh, occupations are grouped into the styles of, uh, of uh, occupational wage distribution at the beginning of the period in 1979. And you can see uh, the change in occupational shares in each of the uh, uh, um, yeah, sorry, in each of the deciles. Um, uh, and, and you can see that we see some polarization in each of the last three decades, including uh, the 2000s. And, and in each of the last three decades, the major thing that you observe is really uh, a decline in the middle and an increase at the bottom. In fact, of, uh, sorry, an increase at the top. And in fact, overall, 80% of employment shares that have been lost by milling occupations have been gained by top occupations. And this is really the main feature of the polarization process in, in, the, U, in, in the UK. Uh, this is very different from what we know for the US. The US only experienced job polarization in the 1990s. And in the 2000s, employment growth was entirely concentrated at the bottom. Okay, so this is very different from what we know from uh, the, the US. So some other uh, details, that, uh, we don't need to go through all the numbers here, this is just to highlight uh, which occupations, which are listed here, contributed to the decline, and I want to focus on this column here, of uh, middling occupations over the entire period between 1979 and 2012. So what I want to highlight here is that the main contribution actually comes from the decline in craft and related occupations and plant and machine operatives. Uh, they account for uh, most of the decline in, in, in milling occupations, so these are production jobs. So the decline in milling occupations here is not so much about clerical occupations, it's really about production uh, uh, jobs in the UK. And the other thing is that uh, if you look at how this happened over time, you actually see in the data that this starts right at the beginning of my time period. I can't go any uh, further back than that. So the, the, the process starts in 1979, which is the first year I have available, uh, and, and it goes down pretty smoothly over time it, uh, from the very uh, uh, beginning. So here is a picture, basically it's this, it's this picture here, but uh, now I'm actually decomposing the changes in each of the occupational designs into two components. One, between one, the darker, the darker beans, this, this shows, uh, gives you, uh, the, the, the ch for each of the styles, it tells you how much of the change in the employment share is accounted for by changes in the relative size of, uh, uh, of um, labor supply groups, which are defined by these variables down here. So I've got f 48 groups, four educational groups, gender, immigration, and three age groups. So, so this is telling you that, uh, uh, so if, you, if we just focus here, for example, this is, uh, you can see very clearly the effect of the increase in education. There is, a, there is a, a decline at the bottom, this darker here, because people are becoming more educated, so this education, this, this, uh, the styles tend to decline, and there is an increase at the top, which is, again, because of education. You can, you can do this using uh, either only education or 400 groups using uh, combinations of different groups. The results are always the same. What matters really is education. Uh, so the main force at play is really uh, uh, you know, the, the educational upgrade, upgrade of, the labor, of the labor force here. Um, you can, the, the, the green uh, bit, sorry, the, the gray bits uh, show the, the, the change in the occupational, uh, in the occupational shares of each decile, which is due to the reallocation of education uh, of different groups across occupations. So the fact that you can find uh, that graduates can move from, from top jobs to, to jobs uh, lower down the occupational uh, uh, ladder. And you can see that those changes, so the reallocation of educational groups from one uh, occupation to another, tend to uh, uh, explain the entire growth at the bottom of the um, occupational uh, distribution. Now, these are the numbers behind those, those, uh, the graphs that I just showed, and I, just in the interest of time, we can focus at the very uh, top here. I'd like to make a very, some very simple points. So if you uh, look at the middle, uh, this is broken down by graduates and non-graduates, so you can see the contribution of, of the two groups to the overall change, and you can see the polarization is, in the UK, is a non-graduate phenomenon. The entire decline in milling occupation is accounted for by non-graduates, and this is mostly explained by the decrease in the relative number, the between effect here, and this is like from, the, from the 1990s in particular. Graduates account for all the growth at the top from the 1990s. You, uh, you can see here the contribution of non-graduates is very uh, small. 
and we never see uh, polarization within graduates. Uh, we see in the 2000s a shift of employment for graduates towards the bottom, but this is away from the top towards the middle and the bottom, not a polarization process for for uh, graduates. Uh, the paper, as I said, is called Anatomy because it, it has a lot of details, but I will not kill you by this today. Um, uh, what, what I can report is that, of course, you can't do a paper on polarization without looking at routine employment. So I went into some uh, uh, details here. Uh, there is an issue of how do you decide what is routine employment and what is not, and people tend to have different approaches. So basically, I tried all the approaches that I was aware of that you can apply to UK data. So I used three different uh, uh, classifications and basically redid the um, shift share analysis that I just presented distinguishing between routine occupations and non-routine occupations. And what you find, again, is that most of the decline in routine occupations is explained by compositional, is accounted for by uh, compositional changes. So, so this is quite important because there is a tendency in the literature now, and there are even papers published in the American Economic Review that do this, to use routine employment as a proxy for technology and interpret any changes in routine employment as driven by technology. But what this is suggesting is that this is very highly correlated with changes in, in the educational composition of the workforce. So we should be careful making statements uh, in, in that, uh, uh, like that. And the other result, uh, it's not uh, new to you if you're familiar with the work by uh, uh, conducted a uh, Eurofound, but which ap appears to be new in the academic literature, is that if you re-rank the occupations in this exercise based on their education level rather than their wage level, which is this pretty st the standard approach in, in, the, um, uh, in the polarization literature. So if you re-rank the, the, educations by, sorry, the <laughs> occupations by education, you see very clearly that the, education, the occupations that lost the largest employment shares in the UK over the past 30 years are the ones which started off with the lowest level of education. So there's been a very strong shift of employment away from low educated occupations, which are not necessarily at the bottom of the wage, uh, the, uh, the wage distribution in the UK. Okay, so again, there. Are, uh, 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 sorry. So the last thing that I check, as I said, is what happens to occupational. Um, uh, wages. Do we see uh, uh, wage polarization in, in, in the UK in terms of occupational wages? And the answer is no. This, ch this changes the, the so if you just look at the, at the bins, just ignore the line. You can see these are the changes in, in real wages in each of the three decades for the same occupations that we saw in the other graphs. And you can see that there is no indication that uh, wages in, uh, in, um, in, in occupations in, in the middle of the distribution perform worse than other occupations. In fact, actually, you can see that the, the, the median uh, ones always do very well in each, uh, in each year. And in fact, actually, you, you might, if you, you know, it, might, it might be surprising to some extent, but uh, um, actually, this is not unknown. I mean, this, is, this actually happens in the, UK, in the US as well. Uh, in the Alter and Dorn paper, where they showed the overall polarization of wages, they actually have to spend a whole page of the American, of, I think it's the American Economic Review, explaining an anomaly, in, what they call an anomaly in the data, which is that actually clerical jobs have seen a very large increase in wages. Um, and that is, again, not very consistent with the idea that there is a, a decline in the, in the demand for, uh, for this kind of jobs in, 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 in countries with uh, um, um, advanced technology. So anyway, the bottom line here, we don't see polarization in wages in, in any decade in the US, in the UK, and in fact, what we see is that over time, there seems to be a deterioration in the relative performance of wages at the top. And I think this is actually pretty similar to the graph that was shown this morning for Poland for the 2000s. This is in terms of the styles that the graph to show this morning was in terms of uh, occupational groups, but actually in the paper I have it in terms of occupational groups as well, and it's very similar. Um, and so again, this goes to reinforce the point that there is some indication here that something has been happening at the top that has kept wages uh, down. And this is consistent with, an, with a story where supply has been playing an important role in, in, uh, in uh, shaping the changes in the, in, in the labor market. So 
just to conclude very briefly, the paper highlights a number of major differences between the polarization process as has evolved in the UK over the past 30 years and what we know about the polarization process in, in the US. We see polarization in each decade in the, in the UK, but uh, and never wage polarization in, in the US, and, and uh, sorry, again, in the UK. Um, and and the real the major feature of the polarization process in the UK has been a shift of employment from the middle to the top, and this can be in account in accounting sense explained by the increase in education in the labour uh, in the labour market. So there are a number of of, uh, of pieces of evidence that suggest that supply side changes have, uh, do matter in the UK. Uh, they're listed here. I'm not just I'm not going to do. I'm going to go through them again, but uh, I think my my the, the, it, it's clear that we need better identification strategies. This is an entirely descriptive paper, but which uses the, you know really the same methodologies that have been used so far to 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 reach different conclusions. Um, uh, but I, I I think it's fair to say that the descriptive evidence presented in this paper is not consistent with the idea that the whole process is entirely driven by technology, and therefore we are. Uh, uh, the future of the labor market lies entirely in the hands of, of robots or similar uh, uh, technology. And I think the general point I would make, rather than dismissing the role of technology, which is not what I'm doing, is what I'm trying, the point really that I'm making is that we still have a very limited understanding of what technology exactly does to labor. And uh, it is, you know, it would be, uh, you know, silly to deny that technology uh, replaces workers in performing certain routines. That's actually why technology exists in the first place, so that's not surprising at all. Uh, but what actually happens to labor when technology uh, kicks in, I don't think that's fully under, that, that is fully understood, and it's also shown in some of the papers that are out there on the polarization literature, for example, again, uh, I'd like to reiterate the point about the, the, what is happening to wages of clerical workers. Their wages are not going down. They're actually, they've actually been doing pretty well, both in the US and in the UK, in spite of being under the threat of computers. Okay, thank you.